Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about how f prime, the derivative of f, tells you so much about f of x. Um, so on this slide, I'm just going to kind of like go over some of the things it tells you, and then we'll look at some graphs and see how it relates. So first thing, uh, f of x will be increasing if f prime of x is greater than zero. Similarly, f of x will be decreasing if f prime of x is less than zero. So that's like the main thing I think people think of when they think of f prime's relationship to f of x. So related to these ideas, f of x has a relative maximum or a local maximum at x equals c if f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals c. Um, and related to that, f of x has a relative minimum at x equals c if f prime changes from negative to positive at x equals c. Those two facts combined are called the first derivative test for relative extrema. We don't need to name that here, but be aware that those relationships exist. All right, so beyond that, there's even more. So f of x is going to be concave up, which means the tangent line is below the curve, um, if f prime of x is increasing. And the flip side of that is also true. f of x is going to be concave down if f prime of x is decreasing. We're going to use those facts a ton. Another thing related to these, f of x will have a point of inflection at x equals c if the two things I'm about to write are basically the same. I prefer one over the other. Uh, the first is f prime changes, so we will have a point of inflection. f of x has a point of inflection at x equals c. If f prime changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing at x equals c. But if you think about a function, or the derivative in this case, changing from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, that's equivalent to saying f prime has a relative extrema at x equals c, so f of x will have a point of inflection if f prime has a relative extrema at x equals c. You need to be aware of both of those things, f prime changing, increasing, and decreasing, or decreasing, and increasing, and f prime having relative extrema, because sometimes with tricky questions, you need to use one or the other. Um, so for all of these reasons, you should learn to love f prime of x. It's going to tell you everything about f of x, especially if you have the graph of f prime, and that's what I'm going to focus on with these examples. So we're going to have the graph of f prime, and we're going to just figure out some stuff. All right, we're given the graph of f prime of x, the derivative of f of x. We want to determine where f of x is increasing. So we think back to what we know about f of x being increasing. Well, f of x is increasing when f prime is greater than zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the graph and I'm going to figure out where this graph, the graph of f prime, is positive, meaning above the x-axis. So what I'll do here is just highlight it for you. So on that interval, on this interval, and on this interval. All right, so now I want to write that up. So I will say f prime of x is greater than zero on negative six inclusive, because at negative six, you're definitely greater than zero, um, to negative five not including negative five, because at negative five, f prime is actually zero, and then negative 1.5 to one, and 2.5 to 6.5. So notice only negative six is included here in the f prime is greater than zero, but now I'm gonna do a weird thing. I'm going to include all of the endpoints when I state the intervals on which this function is increasing. So this is a weird combination of like, the definition of increasing and decreasing is really an algebra two definition, uh, which requires two points, so you can make a comparison, whereas the calculus that we're using only requires one point, the value of the derivative. So I'm going to include the endpoints here and say that f of x is increasing on negative 6 to negative 5, inclusive, negative 1.5 to 1, inclusive, and 2.5 to 6.5, inclusive. So read that solution again, kind of memorize the form of it, and use it every time you need it. If the question had been about decreasing, we just would have looked for where the derivative is negative, and we would have done the exact same thing. All right, so the thing to note here, as I mentioned, is we want to be careful with the justification of endpoints. Um, so, for example, I have said f prime is greater than zero, and then I stated where that happens. For example, f prime of negative five is equal to zero, so it wouldn't be right to say f prime of x is greater than zero on negative six to negative five, including negative five. But we do include the endpoints when we talk about increasing and decreasing. It's kind of like a sticky point, but you'll get used to it as you do more problems. And I assure you, you will do a lot of problems like this. All right, another thing. Given the graph of f prime, it's the same graph. Find and classify the critical points of f of x. So one thing my students frequently do is 
uh, they will forget to classify them. Or when they try to classify the critical points, they'll just say because f prime equals zero or because f prime is undefined. Um, classify means is it a maximum or a minimum on f of x? So let's review a little in our brains. As soon as we see this question, I think a critical point is a point in the domain of f of x um, at which uh, f prime is zero or f prime is undefined or does not exist. So I'm gonna look at this graph and figure out where that happens. This is the graph of f prime. I can see f prime is defined everywhere. So I'm just looking for the zeros. So these are gonna be our zeros. So I'm gonna write down that those are my critical points. f of x has critical points at negative five, negative 1.5, 1, 2.5, and 6.5. Now I need to classify them. When I classify critical points, what I like to do is I like to group them by relative maximums and relative minimums so I can just justify once um, instead of having to write, I mean, there are five critical points here. I don't want to have to write five justifications. So I'm going to look for all the places where the derivative is changing from positive to negative, and I will highlight those. So we go positive to negative, positive to negative, and positive to negative. So everywhere the derivative is going from positive to negative, the function is going from increasing to decreasing, relative maximums. So uh, let's write that up. So uh, I will say f of x has relative maximums at x equals negative 5, 1, and 6.5. And I want to give a reason because f prime changes from positive to negative at those x values. Perfect explanation, full points. All right, then we want to say uh, we have to classify all of them. So I'm going to look for where the derivative is changing from negative to positive. I will highlight those here. Negative to positive, negative to positive. So now we just want to write that up f of x has a relative minimum at negative 1.5 and 2.5. And we need to give a reason. So our reason would be because f prime changes from negative to positive there or at those x values. I like to vary it up to make sure that I hit all the like word combinations that will, will give you full points. Um, but if you're ever worried about it, just be very explicit, right? Like the first explanation says at those x values, it's a little more explicit. All right, next up, the graph of f prime is given. Determine where f of x is concave up. So we go back, I'm always thinking of what I wrote on kind of that first page, like those were the things, right? So concave up, thinking I would need f prime to be increasing. So f of x is concave up when f prime is increasing. Now I just look at this graph and I figure out where f prime is increasing. I'm gonna highlight them. So on this interval and on this interval. All right, and then I'll just write up my explanation. So I'm gonna say f of x is concave up on negative two to negative one and from two to five, and I need to give a reason for that, and I will say, because f prime is increasing on those intervals. So it's not like, once you know the relationships, answering the questions isn't that bad, because the answers kind of have like a template. You're just filling in the numbers, um, but you gotta get to the point where everything you look at just makes sense, right? So put in a little bit of effort at the beginning, and that'll really pay off long term. Let's do another thing. Same graph, determine the x-coordinate of each point of inflection, or POI, of f of x. POI is an acceptable abbreviation. So I have to think this through. All right, points of inflection. There were two different ways that I could kind of talk about that. So uh, one of them was f of x has a point of inflection where f prime has relative extra mode. That is by far my favorite way to do this because it is the least amount of writing. The alternative description would be to say, or f of x has a point of inflection where f prime changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. I don't like that because then I feel like at each point I have to say that f prime went increasing, decreasing, then decreasing to increase, and then increasing to decrease. It's just like a lot of writing where I could have just said has relative extrema. Um, okay, so a thing that people screw up all the time, or I don't know if they screw it up, but like they worry about it and they shouldn't really worry about it, is f prime does not need to be differentiable at the points where f prime has relative extrema. Right, f prime could have a relative extrema at a sharp turn, which is what's happening in this picture, like everywhere. Um, that doesn't mean that there isn't a relative extrema. It doesn't mean that f prime isn't changing from increasing to decreasing. So think that through, right? We need f prime to change from increasing, decreasing, or decreasing to increasing. We don't care how it does that. It doesn't need to do it smoothly. It could do it with sharp turn or a cusp, whatever. All right, so let's identify our points. I'm looking for relative extrema, and I see those. And so I'm going to identify them. So uh, f of x has points of inflection at x equals negative 2, negative 1, 2, and 5. And now I need to give a reason. So I'm going to say uh, 
because f prime has relative extrema at those values. Perfect answer. So the other thing, uh, I'm just going to go back and highlight it again. Notice that f prime is not differentiable at those x values. If f prime is not differentiable at those x values, that means f double prime does not exist. So f double prime doesn't exist, but we still have points of inflection because f double prime is changing sign, right? Uh, if you look at x equals negative 2, for example, f prime goes from decreasing to increasing, which means that f double prime goes from negative to positive. f double prime had a sign change, point of inflection. All right, let's talk about a couple of these other weird things. So I don't know how you would be deliberately asked about this other than what I've done here. Um, so this is the same graph. And the question is, what is happening on f double prime at the circled points? So those points are like a little weird. They're points where f prime is not differentiable. They're kind of sharp. They're not the sharpest of turns, but they're sharp turns kind of by definition. Um, so what I want to do is I want to kind of look at the slope of f prime. So I'm looking at the slope of f prime here. So the slope there is negative 2. Uh, the slope here is negative 1 half. So we went from a slope of negative 2 to a slope of negative 1 half. And we didn't like transition. We just went from one to the other, which means that f double prime just does not exist. Um, and then uh, that's just going to keep happening. So here I get a slope of negative 3 halves. Um, here I'm getting a slope of negative 2. So again, we're just transitioning from one slope to the other slope. Uh, and then what you'll notice is that we're going, so at, at x equals negative 4, we went from a negative slope to a negative slope. There's no sign change. We just went from one negative slope to a different negative slope. And then at x equals 1, we went from one negative slope to a different negative slope and then uh, positive to a different positive. And the same things here. So what's happening at these points is that f double prime just does not exist. f prime is not differentiable at those points. Um, but while f double prime doesn't exist, it is also true that f double prime does not have a sign change at those points. So there is no point of inflection for f of x at those points. Those are just weird points. Um, and they come up a lot because a lot of f prime graphs are going to be piecewise linear functions. And so when you transition from one piece of one linear piece to another, it's not going to be smooth. Um, so just look out for those. Don't be afraid of them. They're not, they're just, you know, points where F double prime doesn't exist or where F prime is not differentiable. Um, all right, next up, this is, I'm going to use a different graph and I just want to highlight one thing and it'll be the end of the video. This is a different graph. And what we want to do is we want to find the X coordinate of each point of inflection of F of X. So this graph is a little bit weird because of the interval from four to six, like what is happening there? F prime is constant on that interval. So we go back and we think about what it means for F of X to have a point of inflection. We said either F prime has a relative extrema or F prime changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So first let's find the points of inflection. So these are my relative extrema. Those are the points of inflection. So I'm gonna say, f of x has points of inflection at negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 1. I need to give a reason. I'm going to say because f prime has relative extrema there. Now, let's deal with this other thing. This box is questionable, right? So uh, on the interval from 2 to 4, f prime is decreasing. And then from 4 to 6, f prime is constant. So we don't go from increasing to decreasing. We don't go from decreasing to increasing. We go from decreasing to constant. That is not a sign change for f double prime. And then similarly, at 6, we go from constant to increasing on f prime. That's, again, not a sign change. So f prime does not change increasing to decreasing or increasing. Oh, I wrote the same thing. Or decreasing to increasing. It shouldn't say increasing to decreasing twice. It doesn't change that anywhere in that box. And therefore, there are no points of inflection for f of x in that box, right? It's the relative extrema or where you're changing from increasing to decreasing on F prime. That's not happening here. So there are no points of inflection. The reason I bring this up, this was a tough AP FRQ, like a little section of one free response question one year. And people came back and they were a little freaked out by it. I just wanted to point out, like, if you go back to the things that you know, the things that you've memorized, the things you've kind of internalized and just trust in that knowledge, you could answer this question even if you've never experienced it before, but now you have experienced it. All right, that's the entire video. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.